Chris Buck. Um, I only recently found out about Chris. Blah, blah, blah. I only just recently found out about Chris Buck. Well, I say recently. It was a year ago, ish. And the guy's a beast. I have players come up to me now, now that I know of Chris Buck, uh, and I send them to him as far as just listen to how that guy plays. It's a question I get a lot as far as oh, I can play this scale. I can. I've got that guitar, this amplifier, but I don't sound like this guy. And one of the problems is that the gear is not helping you. <laughs> it's um, you need to be musical. Chris Buck is one of the the great players uh, in this day that plays can play a lot, but he plays very little. But he does it so well. He um, he puts everything into each note. If if he's playing. <laughs> Everything he's doing, he's on it, focused. And how do we do this? How do we get to that point of understanding? And a lot of it, for me personally, I think is coming from your emotional connection to what you're actually playing. Um, when I play scales, or when I started studying scales and whatever, I was just metronome on. All that kind of stuff. And it was boring and it wasn't musical. When I look at players like Chris playing, I um, I can I can feel that they're just like going for it. Each note, they're like, yes, that's what I want to do. They're attacking it with intention. This is the big thing. Yes, you need technique to play like Chris Buck, but I've seen people who have more technique than Chris Buck who play stuff that I'm not personally interested in and it doesn't sound like they're emotionally attached to what they're doing. So how do we do this? When you're practicing, one of the best things you can do is sing along to what you're playing. Um, sing your scales. In, I, say, I say it all the time, don't bother practicing scales. Like this, once you know the pattern, then try and make it musical. So anything from sliding into your notes. sliding in or if you've got two notes on a string hammer on or if you're coming down the scale do a pull off to try and get used to these ways of phrasing and and speaking with your scales rather than just technically playing them correctly um, so what other things can you do like if you take a scale always practice your scales with the harmony behind you or if, if that may not make sense what I mean is have something if you're playing an A major scale have that sound, the A harmony. Oh my God, I can't speak today. Have a piano or a guitar or a bass or whatever playing A major in the background so you can hear the relationship to the notes you're playing in the scale and the harmony that it's coming from. If you just play the scale, you can't really form a, a, an intelligent connection and an emotional connection with the harmony. This is one of the biggest things, because I'm imagining when Chris plays, he's singing that stuff in his head, and he just knows what he wants to do. He's he's sung uh, he's played enough and sung along with his playing enough that he just knows what he wants to do. So let's see, um, other examples I use with my students is, if you're, let's say for instance, if I said to you, do an air guitar solo, but you can sing along with it, most people that I've asked this to, same with drum solo, if, if I say, you know, it's a drum solo, most people will rhythmically sing along with their hands moving. They'll be like... So they're singing along. And a lot of people actually say they're not rhythmically cool, but I ask them to do that, and then they'll go... And it's all rhythmically correct. Same thing when you're say, doing air guitar solo. Whatever. You're a better guitarist or better musician in your head than you are in real life, pretty much the way it works. So you've, you've bypassed the, the need for technique when you're singing this 
lead guitar stuff. We need to find the balance between the two. So when you're playing a scale over the top of a chord, try and sit there and just take a few notes like... I'm going to use those. Um, I'm going to get that harmony in my ear. If I play my A string, now I'm attached to A. I'll play each note. And I'll figure out which ones I like more than others. I like those. The little triad. That note, I'm not, uh, I like it, but I'm, you know, I prefer that one, or that one, or that one. So I'll sit there and I will literally try and sing these notes. Until I find there's a moment where I connect to those notes, I understand what they sound like with the A or the chord in the background, and then I can start making better judgment calls on, oh, I'm going to wiggle my way to that note because I like the way it sounds, and it sounds like if I end my melody on that note, it will sound complete. The relationship you have between the harmony or the root note and all the other notes is important to understand. This is my main thing, you know not just Chris, but all the players you like and listen to, the chances are they know what they're doing and they know where they're going and they know why. So, sing along with what you're playing. Sing along with your scales. Try and rhythmically and melodically get this together so that then when your technique allows you to, you can play with this emotional connection. Um, there you go. That's that's kind of what I'm going to rant on about. That this That's what I am ranting about in this video. Um, there you go. I'm going to leave it there. Short and sweet and enjoy and I'll see you next time. Cheers.